Well, hello, and welcome to the Photo Brigade podcast. I'm Robert Kaplan. Today I have Sybilla Smith with me. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. Thank you for joining me. Um, thank you you for are a me. different sort of uh, guest that I've had in the past. Um, and let me just quickly explain who you who you are. I'm going to read it because um, it's it's hard to keep all this information. You've had quite a career. So, uh, Sybilla is an independent curator with over 27 solo or group exhibitions featuring 80 international photographers exhibited in the U.S., Mexico, and South America. Uh, she consults with individual photographers, art organizations to develop uh, exhibitions, educational programming, and written content including artist statements and marketing material. She's an adjunct professor and guest lecturer and thesis advisor. She's worked at the School of Visual Arts, um, the School of the Museum of Fine Arts, Harvard University, among many others. Uh, and she lectures and conducts workshops on Concept Aware, which we'll talk about in our, in our talk here, mm -hmm. uh, which is a unique creative framework of concept development for artists uh, illustrated through contemporary photography. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll, we'll have a nice conversation about uh, uh, creativity and concepts and, and so on. Mm -hmm. So before we get started chatting mm -hmm. with you, I just want to give a quick uh, thank you to Adorama, as always, for letting us use their event space, uh, to Canon Professional Services, to Temba Bags, um, and to uh, Lacey uh, for your support. We really appreciate it. Uh, every every uh, week we do these events and, and so on, so you're one of them. Um, also, I should I should mention, we have a lot of uh, cool events coming up this month. Mm -hmm. um, we have, um, uh, well, at the end of the month, uh, you're going to be uh, part of this Adorama uh, Expo, mm -hmm. uh, Inspire, Inspire Expo. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to be hosting one of the panels mm -hmm. with us. Yes. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit more about that, but mm -hmm. that's on the 29th of June, and mm -hmm. everybody should come yeah um, ours is 1 to 2 30. it's one, one art to and activism art and activism and mm -hmm. you've got a great panel oh, um, an amazing panel yeah yeah um and then you know we also have our our monthly uh, beer and wings event coming up on the 19th and the next day we have a panel with women photograph um uh, and then after the on sunday after yours uh we have another photojournalism uh panel at the same expo with mm -hmm. uh, nppa and asmp it's going to be great so i uh, hope you all join us for that so uh, anyway, happening. all that spiel <coughs> said, um, let's let's talk about you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, like I said, you know, I usually have photographers mm -hmm. or specifically photo editors or whatever on on this podcast. And we talk about how they made their career in photography. Mm -hmm. You, on the other hand, aren't a photographer yourself, mm -hmm. but you work directly with photographers on a regular basis to help them you know, figure out their concepts or help them put together an exhibit uh, or curate an exhibit or, or write their artist statements mm -hmm. or, you know, write books and, and so on and so forth. Correct. Um, can you tell me about how you got into this career of yours? And we also have a sort of we a slideshow, some, some slides that will will bring up from time to time yeah. uh, as you refer to them, mm -hmm. which is part of a keynote you gave me. Yeah. Um, my background is not on the keynote and uh, it is circuitous, and one way that I talk about it is I backed into my career. I never knew where I was going. I just got there. Mm -hmm. um, but there is a thread that that is really interesting, and that is that my background is in, uh, my graduate work is in social work. So I'm actually a trained listener, and I am all about process. Mm -hmm. I'm really listening for what's not said. Um, I also did a lot of organizational development as part of my, my master's. Um, so. I have had, I, have a, I was a visual person in a non-visual uh, field, and I literally went back to school after uh, I graduated from Columbia. I worked for a dozen years here as a social worker in a lot of different, very creative uh, auspices. I had a lot of fun. I was published. I taught at a college level at Hofstra University. Okay, yeah. Um, but I was kind of an artist stuck in this other uh, uh, world. I had not, I was brought up to think that I was very creative, however, that creativity or the arts were not your profession. And then when I was an adult and realized they could be, I took a really hard right, and I literally went completely backwards. I took um, positions that were, I, you know, I was running a department, I stopped running a department, and I went backwards, and I went back to school for clothing design, because mm -hmm. I love to draw, and I've always loved clothes, and I actually love the history of fashion, and actually the socio-political 
role it plays. Um, and uh, that's what I went on to teach as well at a college level. Um, there's a lot more to fashion. Uh, Kardashians are not what you equate it <laughs> with, but there's a really rich history that I love. Mm -hmm. And I was able to study in Paris with FIT. And I did this huge shift. And that led me into this other field. When I left New York, um, I started to style. I had not, I actually started a clothing line. And from that led to styling. From styling led to art directing, creative directing, and I was working in a photographic field. I mean, I was on set, I was, I was creating ads, editorials, and I was a visual person with this education bent. Uh -huh. And so um, I never quite fit in in any role I was in because I was always multifaceted, and it's not, I'm not a sound bite. However, what was happening for me is I was seeing this thread around creativity, and creativity fascinated me, but there isn't a lot of time spent on, uh, people go to school for art and get taught a craft, mm -hmm. not necessarily all of the other pieces that are behind it. So people like Roland Bart and uh, Rebecca Soltnick, and people who are gonna think and write, uh, Susan Sontag, about visual culture, fascinate me. Mm -hmm. So what ended up happening, um, this is where my career um, crossed over with my husband's, but because he is in the photo field and mm -hmm. started Digital Silver Imaging, uh, a, a photographic photo lab. lab. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, yet what happened is uh, that nexus, uh, my organizational skills came in in helping develop that, but that's really his whole thing and what happened was we conceptualized having a place to show print we never thought of starting a gallery having a gallery it wasn't on our radar but we literally physically had a space and our daughter at that time she, I think she was 10 we were drawing and figuring out how we could do this and we came up with this very thin but pleasant exhibition space and we wanted to show prints we did and what ended up happening is the Griffin Museum of Photography Paula Tognarelli the director um, approached Eric and said do you want to be a satellite exhibition space and she was taking this model and saying um, she has this amazing museum doing very rich and deep explore into photography and she wanted to bring photography to where people were uh -huh. and it was a fabulous model um, what ended up happening there is I had a fashion background. I was deep into that at the time. Um, and I said, why don't we do a fashion related show? And she said, why don't you curate it? And I, I did a show, my first one was um, um, off the wall fashion photography in black and white because mm -hmm. at the time we were just printing black and white at DSI. We mm -hmm. do color now, mm -hmm. have for years. So I worked with, um, Paula and the person who started, um, Jay Cauldron, who started Boston Fashion Week. And the three of us jumped in, put a call out, made a group show. And because I was bringing these worlds together, we had a lot of response. Uh -huh. And from that, I ended up being able to do a pilot project with the um, Griffin, bring a satellite exhibition space into Boston for a year. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what I mean about backing in. All of a sudden, I was curating what was wonderful is it blended all of my interests so contextualizing is really important to me that's where the the people I mentioned that are theorists and thinking about visual culture I love I'm also uh, you know one of my hashtags is punctum junkie I am uh, you know addicted to the emotional impact of photography so mm -hmm. again these two things crossed over and I was able to to play in a new playground and uh, that's what got me going on curating and then out of that concept aware grew got gotcha so long can, background sorry. yeah yeah I know it's okay <laughs> um, can you explain a little bit about concept aware now and, mm -hmm. and uh, let us know and I, maybe yeah, we should maybe start so, it with yeah, this slide show so we can that inspired ideas into impactful images plays into it. I mean, my role in teaching Concept Aware is to bring awareness to the creative process and to get people layering their concept development. And it starts with an inspired idea. And inspired ideas um, have a way to become an impactful image. But there's there's components that make a compactful image. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to trying to bring together that whole package. Sure, sure. So I'll let let's you drive. say, we'll okay. The next I don't even remember. Oh, great. <laughs> I actually love this image, um, and I am basically used it because what I want to do with people is unravel um, what goes into how you see. Because what happens is um, artists, photographers, um, we all do this. Um, 
what you have a reflexive way of creating and you don't necessarily step back and articulate it. Mm -hmm. And you also sometimes minimize it because it comes naturally to you. So mm -hmm. you're not really owning it. My job is to kind of pull that away and help you see how you see and why it matters. Mm -hmm. Because once you have more of that capacity, you are driving and you are going to have a stronger ability to do the things that you do mm -hmm. and I in concept aware go through offering a lot of examples of that of photographers that are doing that this way mm -hmm. like how do they see and a lot of photographers will actually tell you go on their websites or read um, artist statements or go on to galleries and you'll get a sense of that and I want people to own theirs because when they do they make stronger work and they're also able to um, that clarity makes you articulate it more clearly mm -hmm. you can write about it um, and it shows in the work yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah. and so this is a workshop we yes well um, w it originally started as a um, semester class for Mass College of Art as a way to work with their studio foundations which is um, artists of all mediums coming together the first year mm -hmm. and concept aware is applicable to artists excuse me <coughs> of all mediums regardless but I'm Photography is my field, and I use photography to illustrate it. Um, but it started as a semester class, and then I amended it for the School of Visual Arts to be a weekend workshop for their Masters of um, uh, Visual Photography. Mm -hmm. And I also have it in a week-long format. But yeah, it's a lot to throw in to a small space. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I make the different sizes kind of like a drive-by meal versus a picnic mm -hmm. versus like you mm -hmm. know a feast. It's a lot to digest. Sure, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I should try out with this. What do you think we're looking at? I'll make you. <laughs> what do I think we're looking at here? Because this is like. It's we, concept, right? Let's see here. We, uh, it looks like a painting to me. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like it could be, I don't I don't know. It looks like painting and brush strokes to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, it's a photograph. And um, I use this as an example um, where you don't always know what's behind a photograph and it also really highlights concept development and, and the layering. So this is by Utah photographer Amy Jorgensen mm -hmm. and she teaches at Snow College. She also uh, is the director of Granary Arts in Ephraim, um, Utah, which is a, um, an arts center. So her background, um, she was really interested. She read um, Walter Benjamin, was sparked by this idea of the photo as evidence and she was also interested in forensic work and how you use photography to kind of backtrack and tell this story and she is a feminist and she was trying to layer all these things to her own practice and she has um, handmade an emulsion this is a emul this is a photograph of an emulsion she wears on her body she's done this for 10 years this mm -hmm. is called body archives mm. these in print are stunning I have seen them very large and framed go to her website you'll see some installation shots but in essence we're looking at a self-portrait Wow yeah Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff we get into in Concept Aware. And people learn in all different manners. So um, I can be tangential and I I think I correlate a lot of things that people don't normally put together. Mm -hmm. So um, taking a workshop with me is not like taking a Lightroom workshop. You're not going to go from A to B and there's going to be steps in between. I try and we do, but it takes a lot of moving parts. Right. And it takes a lot to digest. Right. So. I tried to break it down. Does that make any sense to you? Sure, <laughs> or maybe sure. you could ask me a question of that. <laughs> because what I see or how I know what you can get from it is different than someone coming with a blank slate. Well, I mean, you, you bring this, do you, you also bring this to not only uh, photographers, you bring this to other artists as well. Is that correct? Or is it, do you only specifically work with? I'm, my majority hands down as photographers, 90%. Mm -hmm. um, I'm teaching at an arts organization in the fall um, where it will be mixed media. And mm -hmm. a lot of my artists are mixed media. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. But uh, here's what happened. In my studio, I have a friend who has a raw food company, uh -huh. and she came in and I was working. You'll see a picture if we get to that where I have stuff all over the wall. And she was looking at what I'm pulling together, and she said, I do this. And she said, you know, her recipe development, her creative work in food mm -hmm. literally goes through some of these channels. Oh, wow. It doesn't matter what the 
end result is. That's what's so interesting right. and also confusing. Right. It's hard for people Who to Who would ask. be your key subjects for the, these types of workshop, would you say? Photographers work wonderfully because Like I, any genre of photography? Any or? genre. Okay. Any genre. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, hilariously, yesterday I worked with someone doing an amazing, uh, important social documentary story on redlining in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. And my next consult was with a baby photographer. She oh, wow. does pregnant women and babies. Sure. So sure. like it's very, mashup. Yeah. Complete. <laughs> two different, very different things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So, so let's, let's move say, on here. Uh, just I'm throwing in some people that I love, trying um, Sondergaard. Um, it's all this looking back at how you see and why it matters. And one point I tried to make is that we're all a particular demographic. We can't walk away from that, but we need to be aware. Mm -hmm. And there are so many layers to um, affect what it is that we see. And how we see then affects how we work, and it limits our work. Right. So I'm not... I'm a big part of what I try to do is a whole beginning part is looking at that. Some of the impediments that are there naturally, they could be bias, they could mm -hmm. be assumption, mm -hmm. um, but we get into that. This is basically my premise and uh, I got challenged to put, um, I don't know if you've ever had to do this, but okay, everyone asked you to make an elevator speech. I was asked to, um, I'm in the process of a book proposal and I had to throw everything into one sentence mm -hmm. and then I got layered with uh, the challenge to make it fit on the back of a business card. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so so this is your business there card. you go. That's the back of the business card. Um, that's me trying to cram absolutely everything into here. Um, so an impactful image is the result of taking an inspired idea through a process of experimentation and refinement aware of choices, decision making, and use of elements in the creative practice. Mm -hmm. And so my workshop literally takes apart um, what makes an impactful image, what about inspired ideas, the whole process of um, uh, going through the creative process and how you often experiment and then you refine and it's, you know, ideas, that's, a, that's a, a, an ongoing process and you can layer yourself, find yourself in that sure. somewhere, but it's layered. Well, what's interesting, I think, is that some, you know, you, you, when people talk about, think about their creative process, they don't, sometimes they don't think about it. They don't. Is what happens. <laughs> and then when you, when you sit yeah. back and really talk about it, especially with somebody with the background like yours, you mm -hmm. get to refine what it is that you do to, to create these things. Oh my gosh. I had a, I had someone in my um, workshop that was a portrait photographer. I'm not kidding. 20 years for portrait photographer. And mm -hmm. he basically looked at me and said, I don't have to have eye contact with the person I'm taking a portrait of. Like it was a oh, new wow. concept. Wow. Like people get into Just their, rules yeah. or their head and yeah. yeah. Um, this is a photo crush, Eric Hadigan hecked. Um, I use this, I love this image personally. Um, however, this is when I talk about punctum. Do you, does that, does that ring a bell, punctum? punctum? No. no, no, okay. Not for me, no. So unless you are reading the theorists, it's gonna not happen. Um, it is from Roland Bart. It is the concept of um, what comes out of a photograph and grabs you. It's the emotional impact of a photograph, and that's why I'm a punctum junkie. I am addicted to that. Mm -hmm. I am. A lot of us are. We just don't know it, and most people don't know what punctum is. But it's basically, in his theory, he is talking about it is what is not describable like if we're to look at that picture you know that those red lips are there and that this is a woman under that very architectural garb that's the stadium of a so he talks about stadium which is actual like a formal analysis of what's in that and punctum is the other part it literally comes out of the photograph and pierces you mm -hmm. so gotcha i'm really into that wow yes <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. La, Teresa on Facebook says mm -hmm. she hates rules, first of all, talking about your last, mm -hmm. uh, what we were talking about, and then she says, spell punctum. P-U-N-C-T-U-M, and it's from Roland Barthes, which is uh, B-A-R-T-E-S, mm -hmm. a French philosopher, Camera Lucida was his book, and um, he's written other things, but yeah. Gotcha. And actually, in my workshop and also that's part of the book that I'm working on is I come my paradigm paradigm is eight elements of creative practice mm -hmm. and one of them is parameters because parameters while rules can be problematic some parameters actually give people some limitless 
opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, I think of Arno Minkinen. I use him as an example. Do you know his work? I don't. Oh, he's a, a Finnish photographer, but lives in the United States, has for years. Wonderful. Uh, just uh, retired from teaching at Lowell, uh, Mass University of Massachusetts. Uh -huh. And he puts himself oh, in the you photograph. Oh, you showed me some photos yeah. of, of this. Yes, yeah. yes. I didn't yeah, recognize yeah. the yeah. name. Yeah. yeah. And talk about rules. I mean, he used film up until very shortly, and there's still no post-production. Mm -hmm. And he is in these shots. And yeah. if you look it up, you think, how? Like, how does he make it? How happen? does he do yeah. this? Mm -hmm. um, but he's a great example of where parameters actually work in your favor. And uh, if you go to his website, he gives you 13 ways of how he works. Wow. And cool. how he sees. Cool. Yep. So that's my break. We don't have to stick on this, but this is my breakdown. When I'm talking to people in a workshop, I try to give them like something to hang it on because yep. it's a lot of moving parts. And that's literally the breakdown that you would go through in a workshop with me define our box, we talk about photography, creativity, that creative continuum is that idea where it's idea formation, experimentation, and refinement. You're always going to be somewhere, but there's a lot of times in the creative process where you can feel pretty lost. Sure. I'm trying to give people like carabiners. Like, right. You're yeah. right? Like yeah, you're yeah. going to you're going to come back to this. Right. Um uh the whole idea of what goes into um inspiring ideas. Um, that has a lot to do with, uh, at Harvard, they have Project Zero, which is an amazing place looking at how we learn. Mm -hmm. And art classes teach us more critical thinking skills than any other class, any mm -hmm. physics, chemistry, science, it's art. Sure. Um, so there's a lot of really good work out of that. And then the elements of creative practice, that's my own stuff. And I just- All right, some behind the scenes yeah. we've got now. I'm like yeah. these behind the scenes shots, okay. <laughs> yep. This you looks like uh, concept boards or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. This is at the Griffin. And um, I think I did this. This is from the workshop I did in April. And I start with this um, because it's really good to get out of your head. There's a lot of play that goes into creativity. Uh, Twyla Tharp has a book on creativity. And she tells you, like, leave time in your month to do what's called scratching, which is to not have a um, agenda. Just go and play and mm -hmm. see what happens. We don't do enough of that. Mm -hmm. um, this is really the first thing that people are doing and we come back to it because it's actually instructive like I had someone you know you'll show some of your propensities there and then that's a really good thing to say to someone who loves pastels and like you know pretty floral pictures to say okay go try some abstract black and white architectural photography uh -huh. because it will strengthen whatever you're going to do because you're outside your box yeah sure, sure so that's a playful thing this is part of that workshop, and uh, this is an MIT student who was explaining. She just did. She, uh, I asked her to be part of the art and advocacy, um, but she's back in. Um, uh, I don't know if it's Beijing or Shanghai, but she is doing these zines. She's an urban planner using photography to express like what's going on in these layers that people can actually see it and then talk about something that's really important in terms of the gentrification and what's it doing socially to this sure. cu their whole culture. Um, that's also people looking at each other's work, which I think is a really important part. And it also builds community. Like I put people into a Facebook community um, that have been, I call them CAers, <laughs> mm -hmm. like gone through the process. And then they can share ideas, which is really fun. We should get something like this going. Well, here you live in, in Massachusetts, right? So. Well, I actually have one foot in each city. I'm from New York, so yeah. it was a heartbreak. It'd be fun so. to get something like this going. Here, yeah, maybe in this space or something. Absolutely, I would actually love to do that. Yeah, and we'll talk I'm about on that. a, I'm on a, um, I'm back and forth. It's yeah. all good. The more I'm here, the better. Um, these are some of the people <coughs> that I give books to read. I'm reading all the time. This is a great compilation. Um, Joel Meyerowitz. You can get that book um, in the museum bookshops all over, and it's for children. And it's called, I think it's called. How do you see or seeing things? Mm -hmm. uh, his good quote in, well, he's got lots of them and lots of examples and heavy hitting people in there. Um, but he talks about no two people at the same time, at the same place, see the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, and the gift is a old, um, not old, it's been around for a while, but it's classic and really, really great about art and commerce. So mm -hmm. all good reads. This was a workshop I did in Dumbo, uh, United Photo Industries. Oh, um, yeah. Yay. I was just emailing with Laura today. Yay. I listened to her whole podcast with you. Um, <laughs> yeah. And um, we did a workshop there. Uh, um, New York um, Women's Photo Alliance was also uh, supporting oh, that. Oh, and there's Jennifer there's who connected Jennifer. us. Yeah. yeah. Yep. 
Yep. And um, this is my favorite part. And that's Katrina Eisman, who um, also joined us, which was great. Uh, and getting so many different varied artists together, right? Someone who like wrote the book on digital photography and this woman, the, the, her back t is to us, is a multimedia artist. Mm -hmm. um, it's just very rich. I always, um, one of the things that I do is I create, in my workshops, I have a part that I call the creativity panel mm -hmm. and I invite other artists to talk about their process because mm -hmm. it concretizes it for people. So this is Claire Rosen. She was being shown at the Dumbo Gallery and so she came in and talked about her work, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. And her book, Imaginarium, mm -hmm. is relatively new mm -hmm. and wonderful. Great on process and giving people ideas. Um, it's a real walkthrough, and it's beautifully printed. Mm -hmm. There's Photoville. Photoville. Yay! Which is what I was talking to Laura about. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get some, uh, we might do a podcast there. We might do Perfect. something else exciting there if we can get the, the proper funding. <laughs> we'll yeah, see. all right. Well, <laughs> Listen up, sponsors. All right, yes. We will get you proper funding. It is the place to be. I tell everyone about it. I love it. We've been involved for years. Digital Silver Imaging has been printing with them for years. I've juried the fence. And last year I did a workshop and it was really fun because this is the workshop um, we went out and I used a container to be an example of every element of creative practice oh, cool. so with this group we went out and and, and for those that don't know uh, Photoville is a basically a village of shipping containers double stacked with <laughs> levels under the Brooklyn Bridge mm -hmm. with uh, different exhibits in each container they have a, a stage under the Brooklyn Bridge where they do panels and, and so on they have workshops photo tours they have a chain link fence that they put photos on they have cubes it's just a you know photo heaven it is photo heaven and it's really um, an international urban block party they yeah. get like literally 90,000 people through there in the two long weekends and the layering of program they do is outstanding mm -hmm. it's it's wonderful yeah this is how I remember people I honestly I meet a ton of people between all of my portfolio <laughs> reviews so you take a picture of them with their either with their work here they happen to have their business card but um, I will <laughs> remember your work before I'll remember you probably so that's a problem but yep. this is how I fix it face to name is terrible <laughs> I'm terrible with it <laughs> so there's a hint it's yeah. like yeah content management is not my stronghold uh -huh. okay this is hilarious but I'll be fast it's just um I did two artist residencies this winter and I guess I just want to um, encourage artists to to look for them because they make a huge difference for me the first time I did this residency it's actually on Martha's Vineyard it's Turkey Land Cove Foundation mm -hmm. TLC Foundation um, it takes women one at a time you are by yourself in this gorgeous setting and um, <coughs> The first time I did that was 2015. Mm -hmm. And I was preparing for giving my concept aware lecture at um, SPE, which was being held in Vegas that year. And um, because I was using this studio and mine didn't have that kind of expansive wall space, I put all of my material up and I pushed back and I looked at it and I'm like, dang, this is like, I think there's a book here. And what ended up happening is prior to my lecture, I was contacted by a publisher. So I've been in a book proposal process and I completely credit this residency and being able to kind of cook my ideas and see them in a different light. Nice. And this was me, this is actually, I had to work with a client when I was out there and that's me editing his work, which what happens is I work with people all over the place and we find all kinds of hybrid ways of communicating and sometimes what they'll do is um, I get hard drives, I get, you know, mm -hmm. um, What's your prints. preferred way, prints to, to go through? Um, what we did here is because we had so many, we did, um, uh, we printed a grid in small sizes and I cut them up uh -huh. and I put them in um, groups, mm -hmm. yeah. And now I'm trying to use Zoom so that I can, I, I Skype with people, but that records it. Oh, okay. Um, that's that's a, a cool. a different platform. I hadn't heard of that. Yeah. This is second residency. Uh, totally a fluke. This is the um, Art Center Granary Arts in Ephraim, Utah. And I got to work there on Zeke, which I'll tell you about. Mm -hmm. This is me working on it. I felt like uh, Russell Crowe in Beautiful Mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I came into this cabin. You just need and the strings. And yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was awesome. The hard part was taking it down. Yeah. So, in terms of curating, I talk about, I work at it from a couple of different ways. This was me curating um, the curated fridge, um, which is done in Somerville. And um, Yorgos uh, F. 
Miedas. I'm going to <laughs> not say that correctly. Yorgo, sorry. Um, he has done this project. It did go to Photoville. It's a wonderful thing to look up. Um, he asks guest curators, and you put out a call. And we had over 100 people send in things, and I got to look at them. It was the winter show this year. Mm -hmm. And then what's interesting is I don't know who's – I don't know the artist. Sometimes I recognize work, but – after I made my selections and found out who they are, sometimes I'm surprised who I included. Mm -hmm. So we literally cover his refrigerator on the front and the side, and um, and he gives you a refrig curator shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had an opening, and this is us talking. So this was the exhibit. This, this is, is the exhibit. So we funny. literally had it. We had so much fun. That's it so was funny. awesome in terms of like how many people came from New York to Maine. I had 40 artists in the show, oh, wow. so it's really fun. And and because I work international. I've encouraged other international artists and there were international artists in this. this are, these are some of the artists that were able to come to the opening, wow. which is really fun. What a neat concept. Yeah. It is. It's a wonderful, wonderful concept. Very and homey. It's very homey. We totally fit in. Uh, we spilled out into the living room. Yeah. This is another show, um, and this is a good way to show you how I work with people. We want to jump to that video if you want to. Okay. This is J. Frederick May, down, and he... Um, I met him in Chicago at the Filter Festival, where I also did a creative uh, concept aware workshop, but I did his portfolio review. And then he called and asked to consult, and then I ended up doing a show at the Griffin with him. Uh huh. Go ahead and put that up, Seth. Warren. And his uh, story and where this went was really interesting. There's no audio with it, so <laughs> sorry. That, yeah, that's fine. Actually, it has really cool audio if you go to his website. Uh, yeah, or mine, right. you'll see it. That's very fast. Uh, it's, it's like a 30 second video. Yeah. So I see you actually comes out of being in intensive care after having a stroke. And mm -hmm. he was a photojournalist who became um, legally blind. He lost 46% of his vision. Mm -hmm. And the work that he has created as a result was part of his um, experimenting afterwards. So he was a stroke patient. And he had all of these, um, there was actually a hallucination component, that's the Charles Bonnet syndrome. He was working through all these things, and he used um, After Effects and played with found photographs that he scanned, played with, and then started making these portraits that pleased him. This has turned into, he has been shown five times. Mm -hmm. He was picked at um, Photo Lucida um, as in Critical Mass, and... Um, lens culture uh he's shown in florida all in a year wow, wow. it was really quite amazing and this is the gallery talk that we put together um to coincide with the show that we worked on together and that is joshua Sarananen, who's also a photographer and a neuroscientist uh amazingly brilliant guy and this is what's really fun for me I, in gallery talks i can put together the context right so um with jeff i literally went from portfolio review to um working with what he was working on and doing his artist statement and the opportunity for the show came simultaneously, mm -hmm. but he was ready for a lot of other things. Um, this is another example of curating. Um, Renee Cox did this um, combined caucus exhibition and it was interesting because she picked all these photographers, there's listed there, and then I had to write on it, oh, okay. which is kind of hard. Right, right, right. Um, Jess Dugan, this is her portrait, Betsy was in it, and this is what I wrote. And so I contextualized it and I called it edifice. And I love that. That's part of my work that's not with individuals, but mm -hmm. that I love to be given that uh, challenge. Mm -hmm. These are, um, I was on the Instagram feed for women's, um, the New York City Women's Photo Alliance. Oh, cool. And this is a spread that I tried to explain concept aware with all of those examples. Mm -hmm. um, I just, uh, one of the um, gallerists that I'm friends with told me I was a glutton for image consumption. <laughs> and it's true. Yeah. So I just, it's just feeding it out, feeding it out. So yeah. these are all people I, I follow or who show me an idea. And people can and just check out that feed. We said it was Women's Alliance. It's the New York City Women's Photo Alliance. Uh -huh. Yeah. And on my Instagram, I do a lot of what I call like educational. Uh, 
um, posts because it's all about what I'm seeing and and how that. And what's your handle on that? What's your? Uh, Jay Sabella. Jay Sabella. Okay. And then, as I said, my hashtags. I do have hashtag Punctum Junkie, uh, Concept Queen, mm-hmm. <laughs> and Concept Aware. Okay. Uh, so so people can tag you in it and get, yes. get your attention, draw your attention. Yes. Okay. That's great. It's really fun. I just saw something. I did. Um, I was out at Snow University and taught a class, and one of the students is doing this new work, and she's tagging it Punctum Junkie so mm. I can follow it and it's right. really fun cool this is me just editing because you would ask for pictures from behind the scenes yeah, it's yeah, kind of yeah. hard because um, I don't always remember to do it but um, these are just projects like I'm in different places doing really different work doing it on the floor doing it on the tables doing it on refrigerators yep. anywhere actually I have a picture of me on the table and I'm at one of the universities but I didn't think that was such a good one to <laughs> include um, this is Paris photo another thing that I do is I have gone to Paris Photo for the last six years, I think. Uh-huh. And um, the last three, I've brought guided tours of small groups of photographers. I'm not the person bringing you, um, I mean, collectors could join me, but they wouldn't know to, I don't think. Mm-hmm. Um, but Paris Photo is this amazing deep dive, and the city is so full of photography that um, it can be overwhelming. It's a four-day international fair, and it has many platforms going on simultaneously. So my work with people, I contract to have 10 hours, and four of them are before we ever leave the United States. And I've actually had people from other countries meet me there, which is really fun, but I can give them all that background before because you you want to make it your fair and you want to comb through all the possibilities this is um with julian sander and uh he was brilliant last year he took um one photograph of august sander's work and he used his photo booth at paris photo to highlight that and he said sensory overload everybody like is looking 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 he brought one photograph Mm -hmm. and geniusly he made a pen triangle in gunmetal gray right there Mm -hmm. and you could walk right by it like not everyone would know it was there and i walked and stopped dead in my tracks and i got it and i'm like you are amazing (laughs) and we had so much fun so that's our crew in there and he has behind there he chose four or five other artists to um, show and his whole staff wrote up a book mm-hmm. it was a really new way to show and it was mm-hmm. very successful mm-hmm. uh, these are other artists showing uh, this is um, M97 gallery um, Steve Harris showing us his work and you just get a much deeper we stop and talk to four gallery directors from different countries and then this is Paris like go anywhere I'm on the metro this is a photography wow. project that is community based that is stunning so the metro is it just one stop is, like, do you have to work with the all metros these every well I mean you don't know like as you're getting I usually ride my bike but uh-huh. sometimes I have to go on the metro depending on how far away I'm going and their public photography unbelievable unbelievable I mean it happens all the time like I'm not I know of ones and I know how to research where to go to look for uh-huh. things but Every year, I find more than I ever knew was there. Every year. And I know they've started doing some similar type things here, especially the new two line. I think mm-hmm. it's like 96th yes. Street. They've got like Chuck Close yes. up there and, yes, and maybe true. some other photographers, but more art right. um, than just photography. Yeah. But I think that that's amazing to find new places for photography like this. This is spread out through the, the subways. It's in parks. There's a lot of outdoor um, shows. You know, the more I think about it, Beautiful. last time I was in Paris, there was a big uh, display on the Seine, the Seine yeah, River. Yeah. Um, and it was like a coffee, some, maybe it was more of a commercial type thing, but it was somebody's documentary photos of coffee, making coffee beans, picking, and, you know, wherever the coffee was grown and so yes. on. But these huge installation yes. along the river. Well, it's like it is a photography mecca, you know, mm-hmm. fighting out where it started. Um, it has a very deep history and um, you find it everywhere. And I seek it out, but I'm always surprised. And it's very community organized. Like the government buildings have something outside. You know, it's integrated into the communities. I found this because I go to the same, or I go to a lot of coffee shops. I I have a great list of that too in Paris. But I know the people in this one coffee shop. And one of them said to me, hey, did you see it? And I didn't. And I literally saw this show on the way to the airport. And it just blew me away. So you just never know. Great programming there. Great. This is World Press Photo held mm-hmm. last year. Beautiful. I just missed the World Press. I was in Barcelona and they had the... Uh, I usually go whenever I'm in town for it, but it just didn't work out this time. Uh, 
Yeah. yeah. It's no. cheap. It's like two bucks to get in or something like that. And that's yeah. another thing. Out of um, the world press goes to a hundred different countries, oh. and the United States is sorely underrepresented. I've yeah. been working on that for three years. Oh, yeah. Talk about funding. Any of your funders want to? <laughs> it is. It is seen all over the world and not seen enough here. Yeah. We really need to fund it. This is how I work with organizations. Uh, this is the pen show that I did the programming. Inez and Venud came to do a lecture. Charlotte Cotton came to do a lecture. So I worked for a year. It was a Smithsonian show coming from, um, it went to five different places. So it went from the Smithsonian around the country. And I worked with Lesley University College of Art and Design, who did a really amazing job of showing it. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful, if I do say so myself. Um, I'd love this quote, nobody can commit photography alone. Marshall McLuhan is another one of those theorists I mm -hmm. love. Love this work. This is Ada Mullinay, and uh, it leads me into the Zeke work that I did because we, um, uh, there's an interview of her in here, and uh -huh. she's also part of the MoMA. Why don't we hold up the yeah. Zeke, hold it up to this camera over here. Oh, there's the camera. So there, <laughs> where was it? Hey, I had no idea. <laughs> We're being recorded, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that I knew. So this camera, is like I'm a, not sure. You know, beautiful I love the the print copies the Luscious. print copies it's beautiful and is this some something that folks can subscribe to yes you can subscribe and now on the Zeke website there's also uh, the ability to have a single issue which is great because uh -huh. this is the first women's issue uh -huh. that's why um, oh, Len right, you Ruga, did the whole thing, right? I this, did this issue. I was the guest editor um, and made the decision that everything in this magazine is by women. Every article, all the photography, we did a global call for submissions and had over 200 of them. And this was so exciting. As a guest editor, I worked with an amazing panel of women to pick the five top photo stories mm -hmm. and then to pick the themes. And I show you here, um, this, like the cover. So I didn't, I've never met this artist, but I saw her work mm -hmm. um, in, she's a Dutch photographer, um, Marina Masesus, and she, um, um, she's now getting a lot, uh, she's gotten a lot of awards. This was a, um, a project of hers. Um, and she is taking pictures of women taking off their hijab. And I think it's very artful. I also think it speaks to the idea of women's impact on documentary. Women tend to do intimate access photography. And I think there's been a trend in photography. If you look just in the New York Times over the last 15 years, this blend between fine art and uh, documentary uh, and commercial and documentary those are all blending mm -hmm. so Kathy Ryan is picking fine art photographers to do different work uh, mm -hmm. LaToya just did a whole scene a whole spread on um, uh, the opioid uh, right. no she did oh. not the opioid she did the um, uh, why uh, women of color do not have the same prenatal care oh yeah yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. so you see this crossover and um, we are becoming visually literate, more sophisticated, and and so you are pulling people in. Lindsay Adario's work, it's very artful, but she will be hitting you with information on issues that are really amazing. Mm -hmm. And that's what this whole article, this whole, sorry, magazine did. Amy Martin's work on climate change in Antarctica. The sexual violence, unfortunately, was the overriding theme and uh, we have many photographers that we feature here mm -hmm. showing unbelievable work. Luckily, another theme on a, on a positive note and advancing note is all the women entrepreneurs and the amount women um, influence the economy in every country. Mm -hmm. And these were really strong stories. I ended up writing an article on women photojournalism because basically we don't know our history. Um, it was actually in Paris um, two years ago, three years ago, um, yeah, three. When um, they did Who's Afraid of Women Photographers, and they did Women in Photography from 1860 forward at two different museums. Mm -hmm. So I'm in a room looking at all this photography by women on World War One. Like, mm -hmm. who knew? Wow. I didn't, I didn't know. Yeah. Um, or the first woman um, killed in Vietnam who was yeah. covering that. that was, and yeah. I know about that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's like people that we just have no idea have been moving us forward. Like we know who's doing amazing work now and there are women doing incredible work around the world. Well, what's amazing world. nowadays is we have social media and we have the internet and, and it's so right now you can get your work out there and, and even do a podcast remotely from 
you know, the, the war zone if you need yes. to or want to. Or yes. The ways in which you can get the workout is amazing, but look at what's happening. You'll know on your panel with Women Photograph. Um, you know, Women Photograph started a database because women are still not being put out in the same numbers as oh, sure. men. Yeah. Um, Rita Leisner is in Toronto, and she took this photograph in Afghanistan, and this was a project with Instagram. She was embedded uh, with a troop, and they were trying to actually use technology for the soldiers. It actually backfired. It didn't work out because of all the tracking and mm -hmm. things that can happen however there's a lot of work it spurred this spurred so much work for um, Rita and she did a wonderful book looking for Marshall McLuhan in Afghanistan mm -hmm. about it however talking to her interviewing her for my article she had to walk into war zones like she literally walked in from Turkey yeah. Wow. Yeah. I the women that went to Vietnam to cover it. One woman went on a game show to get the money to get her one way ticket to Saigon. Oh, man. So access has never ever been the same. However, women are still doing it. Yeah. And now here we have all this access in terms of the ability to do it, but we're still not equally represented. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. You're going to hear more from me on this. I'm I sure, yeah. totally got <laughs> fired up with this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, talk about art and activism. So this is out of Aleppo. Um, Issa Toume is a, a photographer who I met in Paris who has lived in Aleppo through everything that you've heard in Syria. Everything. Mm -hmm. And he has a photo exhibition space mm -hmm. and he shows in work. In Syria, yeah. In Syria, in war. Like, wow. I cannot tell you. I have had my ear to the ground ever since I met him and I'm always glad to see him post because it's like, yes, he's He's okay. These are made, it's, a, a, um, it's called Art Camping, and it's a collective of um, artists in Aleppo. These are made from cardboard boxes from humanitarian aid. Mm. So talk about concept. They basically are referencing the um, Greco-Roman military wear because Syria has been historically a place that has seen so much history, mm -hmm. and here they are photographing it. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. that's the kind of concept-aware, uh, you know, Academy Award-winning for me because they're taking this from humanitarian boxes now, mm -hmm. creating art in a war zone, and mm -hmm. referencing the history of this place. Like, yeah. it's very, very yeah. powerful. Yeah, 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 yeah. So in terms of the, um, the art and advocacy, I just want to, do you want me to tell you who's sure. coming? Sure, sure, yeah. You sure? <laughs> I feel well, like you have a question. No, no. That I, 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 I would like to. I would or like to re reference the art and advocacy, which is, which again, yeah. is June 29th mm -hmm. during f uh, Adorama Inspire Expo here in New York City. Mm -hmm. This is taking place at the Metropolitan Ballroom. Yes. Uh, there's panels. There's vendors. There's all sorts of photo things happening that day. Mm -hmm. um, and you, your panel is going to be from what time? One to two thirty. One to two thirty that mm -hmm. day. So mm -hmm. talk about talk about the. Uh, the advocacy that panel. Yeah. Great. Um, that was really, um, thank you, because you were the person, Jen got me to you, you got me to Danielle, yep. and then um, being able to pull that together was really fun and, and challenging because I could do a day on that mm -hmm. easily. Oh, sure. yeah. And then trying to be represented uh, in terms of the different kinds of work. So. And then asking people and not knowing who's going to say yes. So right, it was sure, a, yeah. a, it was interesting. I'm <laughs> delighted. Welcome to my work. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah not easy. <laughs> um, but really good. And, and I was hopeful that it would come together. And I think it came together really, really well. Yeah. So the people who are coming, um, Tamara Staples, she's a multimedia artist from um, Brooklyn. Uh, her work is... Um, um, side effects is what I first learned of her, and it actually comes out of her um, sister had a um, prescription drug uh, misuse issue and committed suicide using them. Mm -hmm. And all of her work, and we're talking installation and, and rooms that are created with designs that are based on the pills that came from her sister's oh, wow. stash. Um, so again, concept related, it's why I'm connected with her. Um, Miska, Drav I'm going to look at my uh, just cozy uh, my note um, mm -hmm. is uh, also here in Brooklyn did Gowanus Wild which is a wonderful book and his project was he lives in Gowanus and he's a real outdoor person he like ice climbs and is half his foot is in the Adirondacks and half is in Brooklyn. And he is part of um, now working with the conservatory there and you know Gowanus is the mm -hmm. canal is actually movable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's coming back from uh, um, being so uh, industrially uh, overloaded. Um, 
Then um, Niyama Sandy is uh, a curator that she just, uh, her show at Stephen Kasher Gallery just closed, Refractions, mm -hmm. which is um, new photography of Africa and its diaspora. She mm -hmm. co-curated that with Cassandra uh, from Stephen Kasher. Um, and she also did the Queen's Biennial. So she's a curator. She, her background is anthropology. Um, then we have um, Michelle Borge. Have you? I've not met Michelle. So she has a book. She was the head of the um, Parsons Department of Photography mm -hmm. and uh, um, is r working on another book. But one of her books is uh, Art and Activism, Photography and right. Activism. Um, so I, we had a great... She sounds like a perfect panelist. Oh for this, my gosh, for this topic. it was yeah. so much fun to talk. That's with why her. I like so much uh, working with folks like yourself and other moderators for these panels because I've been doing working with panels so long, my, making them myself, and it's you know my network is it's always growing. But there's so many more people. There's so many people that you mentioned today in this podcast that I I've not heard of, that I'm not familiar with, mm -hmm. and um, that I'm learning about. Mm -hmm. So you know it's it's always great to open my mind and everyone's mind. To, to get another range of photographers that aren't necessarily in my background because yeah. my background you know, is pretty much photojournalism mm -hmm. now turned more into commercial and so on mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know these concept photographers um, and, and and you know like Jennifer uh, mm -hmm. for instance exactly. who, who I had on the podcast yep. which was a type of photography that I had never really thought about mm -hmm. she does self-portraits mm -hmm. and, and so on uh, mm -hmm. so yeah I think that that's wonderful and I'm really looking yeah. forward to seeing how this panel Turns out. Yeah, I yeah. actually have one more person on it, which is um, Siddhartha Mittar, who is not a photographer. Uh, well, I don't know if he would put that in his uh, in his bio, but he is a art critic and writer, and he um, uh, writes on art all the time. Mm -hmm. And I just think his commentary is really important. And I guess that's another thing is that um, I don't – you said that the person mentioned that she doesn't like rules. I don't like the boxes that people put themselves into. I get a lot of clients that will say, well, I, I, I've been commercial or I've been documentary, but I want to be fine art. And um, it's it's those – boxes yeah. are just not there anymore it's yeah. a very exciting time to be a photographer and and the the um layers that you can work with in your work is also incredibly um exciting and uh that's what's really fun is the network is just it, it's international in a really interesting way and I think that um, as Americans we really need to have our ear to what's happening in other countries because their conversations that slide I had where it was the augmented photographer mm -hmm. that was at the um, uh, a Swiss based institute in in Paris uh, there was a two hour discussion with six people on a panel I mean mm -hmm. there's real uh, there's a lot to know about what's going on in photography and how to look at it, how to think about it, um, the impact it's having. I mean, it's disseminated, we're inundated with it. Um, so we're really a part of a change and, and it's great to have your ear to the ground. That's so, awesome. Yeah, I'm excited well, about Well, you it. know, I really appreciate you coming on <laughs> and talking about um, all of this great concept mm -hmm. and, and, and about your background. And, and I, I know that we could go on for days yeah. about, about everything, mm -hmm. uh, about each topic. Um, however, we do this for about an hour and yeah, we're about yeah. there. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so um, was there anything else before we end that you wanted to um, get the word out? Uh, you know, how can people reach you if they want to, you know, connect with you about, Mm -hmm. an installation or mm -hmm. your, or creativity or, or attending one of your workshops in the sure. future. Sure. I think I have that on here. Uh, um, my next workshop is at the Los Angeles Center of Photography. Oh, okay. Perfect. Um, that's going to be in July, the 20th. Uh, there's also portfolio reviews happening there. This is kind of everything. Um, my website, my email, my Instagram, my hashtags. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, I wanted to know, do you, like, do you have questions? Like, well, where? no, no. I mean, I, I, I've been. I, I wanted you to come here, give, the, give, give what you've got, and and I'd pepper you with questions as I was going through. And I, and I really do appreciate you coming through and and, and telling us all about what it is that you do. It's it's a concept and 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 creativity. It's it's so, so different for me and mm -hmm. what and what it is that I typically do. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm personally I'm not the type of photographer that really comes up with you know, big concepts. I, you know, I'm, I'm more of a documentary photographer, although there is, you know, There's that's part of, of it. There's a yeah. lot of, a lot of that involved, but, um, um, 
No, that's, uh, I, I, again, I really appreciate you coming on and, and I hope that everybody um, goes to your website, checks out your Instagram um, yeah. and, and comes to the uh, yeah, on a, the 29th. Uh, on, on the 29th, mm -hmm. um, again, here in New York City. Uh, and uh, with that, I just want to say thank you You're so welcome. much for thank coming you. on. Thank and, you. And um, also, last one more shout to Adorama Canon Professional mm -hmm. Services, Tenba Bags, for all of your support, Lacey. Um, and uh, I, we'll see you again next time. Take care. Where are you?